What up? What up? What up? What up? This is your boy, Noop1949, aka DJ Rob Will. Very tired. Life of a Rookie DJ, episode five. Um, try not, not try not to make this one too long because I know the last one is super long. I just had so much knowledge to give you guys. <laughs> anyway, I just want to go over a couple of uh, things that I probably should have went over in the first episode, but it's all good. Um, on this journey to you know become a DJ, whether it be recreational or professional, or for like me, supplemental income and you know personal me because i just love music and i love to be able to manipulate it do your research uh there's not really a holy grail or one place you can go to get all the info but do your research um the way i got started was going to parties listening to djs and looking at what they did and i and i i was like man that looks easy so i did some research and i found out it's not that easy but some of those guys were taking shortcuts because I would see them in one city and then the next weekend I would go see them in another city at a different party and I would get the exact same performance. Same song, same order. And I was like, so these guys are getting paid and these are like pretty big name guys back then. You know, we're talking about early 2000s. I'm like, man, this guy's making $1,500 for basically playing a mix CD he probably made months ago. Not really DJing. Meaning, you know, you're really mixing and you're working and you're picking your songs and you're adjusting EQs. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but I was like, wow. For me personally, it took away a little bit of the excitement of the performance. Because I'm like, that's like going to see your favorite um, MC. And concert in one city and then you go to the next city and the performance is exactly the same like spruce it up a little bit it's like listening to a cd um but anyway i'm not gonna get into that the way i got started though was like i said you know listening to those guys and just being curious and wanting to know more so i started doing research and started finding out about dj companies and djs and dj controllers and dj software and this was in the, in about 2009 ish then i stopped focused on work and then um i would say 2011 or 2010 was when i really got back into it and started researching so now fast forward to 2014 and you know two years ago is when i really really yeah 2012 was when i really really dug in bought some equipment prematurely i had a mixer and i had one new mark ndx 900 I did a couple of small family things and one school thing with that. And then I took that stuff back and I was like, man, the heck are you doing? So I thought about what I really wanted because I I made, and this is another thing you should do too. Take notes, man. Make a list of what you want and how you plan to get it. Because I had that list, but I settled. And when I settled, I didn't get what I wanted. So people like djbooth.net, um... Digital DJ Tips, DJ TLM TV. Those guys on YouTube, look any of them up. They do reviews on equipment and they give you their opinion and they're honest and they're in depth because when you spend your money on this stuff, it's not cheap. Like I have a new Mark IV track and that was about 500 bucks. I have two Electro Voice um, ZLX 15 active speakers. Those are 400 bucks a piece. So what's that? Five plus eight. I mean, you're at thirteen hundred bucks already. I have speaker stands. I have studio monitors. I have a laptop. Not to mention music and tractor. I ended up being a tractor guy because I I like being able to customize things. My life is like that. I like being able to put things where I want them and be able to manipulate more things. And I heard it's a little tougher to use tractor. I heard. I haven't used Serato or Virtual DJ. But just based off the reviews and the equipment, because the first thing I did was find the, the equipment I wanted to use. You know, and funny enough, you know, you, you're going to hear a lot of discussions that I won't get into about real versus, you know, fake DJs. Oh, if you don't spend violently, you're not real. Whatever. Um, 
And I was thinking about going that route. But even a couple old head DJs were like, man, with the new technology, you don't do that because you're going to have to, they're going to be more expensive if you want good ones. And you got to worry about replacing cartridges. And they're like, the best thing to do is if you want to get into vinyl, find someone who uses vinyl and study under them. And I was like, cool. But um, after doing my research and watching reviews on the equipment, the actual DJ controllers, because that's the most important thing to me. Uh, well, one of them, your music knowledge comes one, comes number one, your musical knowledge and musical co- collection. Because if you don't have those two things, and I don't care how much you spend on equipment, you're going to suck. So, and your skill and technique and stuff like that, of course, you need that as well. But the the new Mark IV track, it just, God, let me get up. Ugh. My place is kind of crazy looking because it's this puppy right here. Okay. And that controller just appealed to me, man. I'd already at that time done enough research to see that I wanted to use oh, I wanted to use tractor so I was like okay well what's the best tractor controller so after doing research you came down to the native instruments tractor control s2 and the s4 VCI 400 by Vestax and the new mark 4 track basically which were the best controllers you know per my research and various reviews so i want to scratch i want to learn how to scratch um i know vinyl is probably the best which is why i'm probably looking to upgrade later to some denon sc 3900s because i'll still have my access to my digital library but i'll have real spinning vinyl and i can still use tractor um and one day hopefully i'll branch out into serato and I'll get a new Mark NS7 too, or three, whatever is out by then. Because I like the idea of having those spin- spinning platters and having a real piece of vinyl. But back to what I was saying. Sorry for jumping around so much. So it came down to the tractor control S2, S4, new Mark 4 track, VCI 400. And then after research and reviews, um, I didn't go with the tractor controls because I had no interest in using the iPad and I didn't like the fact that you couldn't replace the crossfader. And like I said, I want to learn how to scratch. So I may want to put an NO fader or NO bender or something like that in there. And I hadn't heard good things about the crossfader. I be- not not that it's a bad crossfader, but that it's not really made for scratching. You can scratch with it, but it's not really a scratcher's crossfader. And then you have, so basically it was down to the 4-track and the VCI 400. The VCI 400 really did appeal to me because it's 100% mini mappable and you can use it with any DJ software, which probably was a smarter choice. Well, I don't want to say smarter. I would say financially responsible choice. But I looked at it and I looked at the 4-track and at the end of the day, people were saying the 4-track was better integrated with the software. They're like, you know, if you want to really, really work very well with the software, not saying that the VCI 400 did not, because I've never used it. They told me to pretty much, you know, my research and some people I've emailed said, hey, go with the 4-track or the tractor control. Tractor control was already out, so I went with the 4-track. Haven't looked back, completely satisfied. The, that beast is metal, doesn't weigh that much, um, and it transports very well. And I'm very, very satisfied with my decision. And I look forward to taking this time out to really learn more about it and to continue to grow as a DJ with that controller. So, so beyond that, do your research, man. Before you, before you go out there and start spending your money on all kinds of equipment and people telling you Pioneer is the best or New Mark is the best or whatever. Do your own research, man. Um, and also, when it comes to buying, you don't always have to blow a whole bunch of money at once. What I did was I got, I'm not even gonna name it all. I would say I got about 15 pieces of equipment. My speakers, my speaker stands, microphone stand, um, a lot of stuff. I got it from American Musical Supply. American Musical Musical Supply had a special where if you spent a certain amount, they would split it among 12 payments. 
So instead of dropping about twenty-five or twenty-six hundred dollars at one time, I think my payments were around a hundred and ninety bucks a month. For me, that was affordable. And once you make the order, you get your stuff. You're just still paying for it. So I felt like that was a smarter move for me. So check out some of those websites, man. Uh, I know American Musical Supplies, ZZ Sound, Sweetwater. And I think those are the three main ones who really do it. I know Sweetwater does like three payments. I don't know if they do more. ZZ Sounds usually does four. I think they might do more. But I know American Musical Supply does like three, eight, and like 12, depending on the branding or whatever price or whether whatever the price of the amount of stuff you're buying comes out to be and they have specials and also man subscribe to those guys um those email listings because they send you the deals and you know what don't be afraid man get on the phone and call those guys because actually american musical supply because i was spending so much gave me a little bit of a discount so call those guys man negotiate finagle do what you got to do you know what i'm saying say hey look I'm out here trying to do this. I'm buying it from you guys. You have competitors. Can I get a little bit of a discount? I'm dropping like $2,700 here. I got a little bit of a discount. I'm not saying it'll always work, but talk to those guys, man, because they, they compete with each other. They really do. Also check bhphotovideo.com. Um, if you have the money then and there to spend like, you know, whatever amount, a thousand, two thousand dollars I always check them first because usually, their prices are lower than everybody else. And I'm not talking about $10, like legitimately. I remember at one point in time, they had the new Mark IV track at about 420 bucks. And right when I was ready to buy it, it, it was no longer at that price and I was so upset. But that's what I mean when I say do your research and look your stuff up. Um, any questions, comments, hit me below part two of this episode coming up in about my bad i just said part two of this episode coming up no there is no part two we're gonna make it a separate episode because it's too long and i was talking about all kind of different stuff so all my djs out there keep sharing the knowledge and keep spinning peace <laughs>